In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the number of binary patterns that are possible for a fixed number of bits that are given. We looked at this slide in the previous video in the playlist, and if we consider the fact that we have one flip-flop here, one storage area, that's capable of storing one bit, either a zero or a one, that means we can have two binary patterns. If we add another storage area, so we have two flip-flops, in other words, we have two bits, we found that this would give us four binary patterns. If we went to three, as you can see here, it means we can have three bits. That gives us eight binary patterns. If we go on to see here, where we've added another storage area, so here we have got four flip-flops, that means we can store four bits there. And there are then a possibility of having one of 16 binary patterns stored within the four bits. If we consider this where we can see we have enough room to store five bits, then we will have 32 binary patterns possible. When we have one bit, we can see that two binary patterns are possible. When we have two bits, we can see there's four binary patterns possible. When there's three bits, we can have one of eight binary patterns. When there's four bits, we can have one of 16 binary patterns. And when there's five bits, we can have one of 32 binary patterns. And if you look, starting at the top, you can see it's 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. There's a doubling of the number of possible patterns every time we add another flip-flop. Every time we increase the number of bits by one, we get a doubling of the number of patterns that are possible. The number of binary patterns that can be produced by a group of n bits can be calculated using the following. We take two and we raise it to the number of bits we are considering. And the formula looks like this, two to the n, where n is the number of bits. So if we consider one flip-flop, which is clearly capable of storing one bit, which would be a zero or a one, then we can say that one bit gives two to the one binary patterns. And of course, two to the one, we should know from our work in mathematics, is two. If I carry on now and look at when we have two flip-flops, something capable of storing two bits, then we have Two bits giving two to the two binary patterns. And that is two to the two, which we know is two times two, and that equals four. So when we have two bits, we know we have four binary patterns. If we continue to when we have three flip-flops, in other words, we have three bits, and we want to know how many possible binary patterns can be placed in here, and of course, we can only place one at a time, but how many different combinations are possible? Then we take the three bits to give two to the three binary patterns. And of course, two to the three is two times two times two, which is clearly eight. So three bits gives us eight possible combinations. Carrying on, we can look at four bits and four bits gives two to the four binary patterns. And if we have a look at that, that is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which we know to be 16. And we can carry on again, and we can look at this example, which is showing us 5 bits. And 5 bits gives 2 to the 5 binary patterns. And I'll leave that for you to work out. What is 2 to the 5? Let me give you some exercises to have a go at. Let's look at exercise 1. And this is where you have a group of 8 bits, which we know is referred to as a byte. And here you can see I've got 8 flip-flops grouped together, which would typically be a register inside a central processing unit. And the question is, how many binary patterns can be represented by a byte? What's the combination of binary patterns? How many different patterns can we have? I'll give you a minute to have a go at that, so pause the video. And once you've had a go, restart the video. Let's now consider the answer to this. And what we know is we use 2 to the n, where n is the number of bits. And in this case, we've got a byte, so the number of bits is 8. So we write down 2 to the power of 8. 
And clearly this will mean we multiply 2 by 2 by 2 eight times, as you can see here, giving us the result of 256. So the number of different patterns we can store in a byte is 256 different combinations of ones and zeros. Let's have a go at another exercise, exercise two. And this is where we have a group of four bits, which we know is referred to as a nibble. And we can string together four flip-flops, as you can see here. So that will allow us to have something that's capable of storing four bits. And the question is, how many binary patterns can be represented by a nibble? Now, pause the video and have a go yourself, and then restart when you've got your answer. Now, the answer I'm going to show here, and we're going to be using 2 to the n again, where n is the number of bits. Now, of course, in this case, we have got 2 to the 4, because there are 4 bits. And this will clearly equal... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which we know equals 16. Let's consider another exercise. How many binary patterns can be represented by 10 bits? Well, I'll let you have a go at this and then restart the video when you've done your solution. So the answer to this is quite straightforward. We use the same formula again, 2 to the n where n is the number of bits. And of course, this will be 2 raised to the power 10, which means we multiply the 2 together, as you can see here, 10 times to give us 1,024 possible combinations of binary bits when we are using 10 bits. And of course, 2 to the 10 equaling 1,024 is an important one to remember. Let's have a look at two more exercises and pause the videos as appropriate. So let's consider the first one. How many binary patterns can be represented by 16 bits? Now, this is another one that's worth memorizing. Well, the answer we can see is we use the same formula, 2 to the n, where n is the number of bits. So it becomes 2 to the 16. Now, I'm not going to show all of the 2s multiplied together here. I'm going to type this into my calculator. And what we get as the answer, as you can see here, 65,536 possible combinations. Let's have a look at another example. How many binary patterns can be represented by 32? two bits well we use the same thing again we use two to the n where n is the number of bits and this becomes two to the 32 which again i'll use my calculator for and you can see the size of the number is indeed very large and this is another one that i kind of recommend that you memorize but if you've always got a calculator to hand it should be pretty straightforward to calculate these large numbers so let's summarize what we've discovered in this video we can use 2 to the n where n is the number of bits in order to allow us to work out how many different combinations of ones and zeros are possible based upon the number of bits in the binary pattern so we can say that when we have one bit it's two to the one is two binary patterns and I'll let this run on, and you can see I'm calculating each of them in turn, and I'm going as far as 8 bits. Now, if we look at what we have here, we can see the power is 2 to the 1, then it's 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 7, 2 to the 8. They're going up in powers of 1 each time, but of course it's based on the number being 2 to the power and if we look at the first one we know we have got two binary patterns we know 2 to the 2 gives us 4 2 to the 3 gives us 8 2 to the 4 gives us 16 now you should have noticed so far that we've gone 2 4 8 16 there's a doubling each time and there should be because the power is going up by one each time then of course we go to 32 binary patterns 64 binary patterns 128 and 256 now that sequence of numbers is something i recommend that you learn 248 16 32 64 128 256 i also recommend that you go on after 256 you will have 
512, then 1,024, then 2,048, then 4,096. And I think if you get up to there, that's good enough to memorise because you can always fall back on your calculator for all of the other values. But I would also recommend that 2 to the 10 is an important one when you have 10 bits because that gives you 1,024 possible combinations. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.